today I'm back with another video. I'm sure that I'm not the only person who absolutely adores the Y2K trend, but I live in a place where trendy stuff is not really deliverable. So I decided to make and show you guys how to make your own Y2K closet. Stay until the end of this video if you want to see how to style these individual pieces. Let's be let's begin. Let's begin. So let's begin. So let's begin. Let's let's begin. So let's begin. I can't think of a creative way how to do the let's begin. So let's just begin, shall we? So this was sort of my inspiration for this outfit. I cut two similar triangular pieces according to the measurements of my bust and I sewed them at the center with right sides facing each other so that it looks something like this. It's time to add the lace. The bizarre um, hand actions I'm doing right now is kind of showing you all where I want the lace to be. Now I'm just measuring the length and the breadth of the lace detail. So after cutting the lace strips, I just arranged them as to how I want them to be sewed down. I'm going to demonstrate that with one and then follow the same for the rest. Now I just flip the lace so that the right sides are now kissing and I'm going to sew a straight stitch about one fourth of an inch from the edge of the material. After you're done sewing, it should look like this. Now that this much is done, it's time to attach the torso. I do not know why it's looking so sad right now, but I promise it will get better. So I just wrap a straight stitch at the bottom without folding it or anything, and I'm just going to pull the threads of one end to give the top a ruching detail. So remember to ruch it and then spread the ruching evenly. So while making your torso, I'm going to recommend you to cut your front and back pieces separately. So this is how you do the mat to cut your silhouette. Imagine your waist is about 28 inches, so the width of your front piece or your back piece will be equal to 28 divided by 2, that is 14 inches. Do not forget to add 2 inches of seam allowance. Using this basic logic, I marked the measurements from below my bust till my waist and I got my base to apex to be about 6.5 inches and my base to sides to be about 4.5 inches. You must be wondering, how did we reach here? So um, this is the part where I'm going to sound really stupid because I filmed this entire thing and then my phone died so I lost the complete footage. I'm really sorry but I'm going to talk you through it, it's not that hard. Our first step is to attach the front and back with right sides facing each other and sewing about half an inch from the edge of the material. Now that we are done with the bottom, similar to how we did the lace, I placed the top and bottom with right sides facing each other and sewed a straight stitch at a width of about 1 fourth of an inch. Next up, we'll be making the sleeves. This is all the excess fabric I have left and I'm going to suggest you to wear the top and measure it from where you want your straps to begin to where they'll end, i.e. over your shoulder from the front to where the back begins. I hope you understood my um, arrow diagram thing, although I look like I'm rethinking my personal life in this picture. So according to my measurements, I cut two identical strips like this and then I folded them once and folded them once more and ran the stitch at the bottom as well as the top. Now that our sleeves are done, I'm just going to fold the back inwards and run a straight stitch. I then attach the sleeves by simply running straight small stitches at the front and the back. So I cut another strip of lace but this time it is for the bottom. We're going to follow similar steps as we did for the top but this time we're going to go roundabout i.e. we are starting from the tip of the triangle, round the back and back to the apex. this top you'll require half a meter of forefoot and preferably a tube top which has a bit of stretch to it and fits you perfectly. You'll also need small amounts of a different fabric, a lighter, darker color, whatever you prefer. I do not know why I have this much but you'll use this to make the straps. While making these remember to use the same steps as we did in the first top. Firstly, we're going to flip the material so that we can make the markings at the back. Next up, I'm going to measure my length as to how long I want my top to be. Next, I'm going to mark my measurements from above my bust up till my waist. But this time, I'm not going to divide my measurements by half. That is, we will not be having a separate front and back piece. Instead, we'll have one continuous piece which we will join right sides together at the back. I hope you got what I'm saying. It's okay if you didn't. You'll get the hang of it as we move forward. I do not know why I didn't realize this earlier. 
I just laid up cut through the fur which resulted in a fur mask kit and a lot of wheezing on my end. So you're supposed to partition through the fur, hold one end down, comb the excess fur out of the way and try to cut only the material. You can see that difference. Due to my ability to mess up everything I touch, I had to give the top a straight cut which resulted in me swallowing enough fur to grow a cat inside of me. Anyways, now you got to simply flip the material and then fold it into half and sew at a width of about half an inch along the curve. Now that the basic layout of the top is all ready, we can't just wear it as the material of the top is quite irritable so we need to add in an aligning that is the tube top. So I'm just marking its length and I'm going to cut it at the bottom as well as the top. I am currently attempting to cut in straight times which is simply impossible for me to do. I've turned the fur top inside out and I've done the same for the tube top. You're supposed to sew the tube top to the fur top at a width of about one fourth of an inch and this stitch must go roundabout such that the tube top forms the inner lining of the fur top or it is present in the inner circumference of the fur top. As you can see the stitches are quite visible from the outside. To fix that you need to rescue the fur which is stuck underneath the stitches. So you can use the scissors or you can use your hands as well. Um, the latter is easier but you'll have an unholy amount of fur on you and now the stitches are completely hidden and now it's time to add those sleeves this is what they look like when they're held extremely close to the camera i kind of wore my top and marked the points where i want my sleeves straps mm, strappy sleeves to be so i'm going to recommend you to do the same i place a strap at one of the marked points in front and it will be attached at the back at the point exactly opposite to that of the front now run a straight stitch to and fro to secure the strap in front and the back. Since we've all been seeing these tennis skirts all over the internet and it's so hard not to fall in love with them, here's how to make them. Take a white or any color cloth of your choice with a length three times that of your waist measurement. You can also adjust the length of the material according to your choice. So now that your material is all cut up, I couldn't fit it on to the camera, it's time to do some math. You can choose any number of pleats you want to add to your skirt, I've chosen 16. My waist measurement is 28 inches and I'm going to divide that by 16 which is going to give me a number at 1.75 inches which will be the width of each pleat in my skirt. You will get different answers according to your measurements. So I'm going to mark these points on my material with a gap of 1.75 inches i'm going to do that at the bottom as well as the top now focus only on these three points you need to touch the first point to the third point so you'll be taking your first point this way folding it and touching it to the third point this will form your first pleat and you need to follow the same steps for the entire material until it finally looks something like this i've attached clips on both ends so that it holds my pleats in place because right now they're looking nice and neat so you need to measure the distance between your waist and your hips for me to six inches and you need to mark that point on all of your pleats yeah those dots you can see that's my six inch mark then you need to sew along the right corner of your pleat from the top to the 6 inch mark so that your waist is sort of cinched in. So now that you are done sewing the top of the pleats, you need to iron down all of the pleats to maintain the width of the folds. So now we need to join our skirt and we'll do this by folding it into half with right sides facing each other and sew at a width of about half an inch but leave a gap of 8 inches from the top. This is where you'll add your zipper. So I first place the zipper under the folds of the slit so that it is sort of hidden as its shade is completely different from that of the skirt. And then I'm going to sew it down this way. It's now time to make that waistband. The length of your waistband would be equal to your waist measurement plus 4 to 5 inches because you have to add a hook. The width of your waistband could be anything of your choice but if you choose 3 inches, the total width of your material will be 3 into 2 as you'll be folding your material later. So you need to place the waistband over your skirt and sew about 1 fourth of an inch from the top so that when you're done sewing, your waistband will look something like this, just how you want it to. So now you just need to fold your waistband inwards and run a stitch over the bottom end of the fold along the existing seam so that your stitches are sort of invisible. The 4-5 to five inches you left in the beginning will form a flap like this where you'll add the hook. 
the skirt is not pretty much done and just saying that gives me so much of joy now fold the bottom end and you are done Strawberry cake